Got this for half off of tent. This was five. Columbia PFG Men's XL Canary Yellow Cape Vented Fishing Shirt. How do I know that it's a fishing shirt? So go over it for the 8,000th time. When will you learn? Cargo pockets on the front. Big accordion cargo pockets. Vented back. That is caped. Caped slash vented. And it has loops. Doesn't have... Well, yeah, it does. These, these kind of like elastic looking little loops. That's very fishing-y. And then this Velcro strap, which is for you to put your fly rod through to hold it like a cool guy as you pose you pose with your redfish and you have to get it at an angle like this because that's the only way to know that you're an elite angler yeah i know this was half off of 20. this is i'd never been to this thrift store before somehow i managed to not have been to three consecutive thrift stores that my buddy mick took me to so they were doing a half off sale it was half off of t uh, 20 which i think i said already Eddie Bauer, new with tags, hiking pants, long pants. Eddie Bauer, not so great, but it's a solid Bins, ban Bins band, Bins brand. And something like this, really good sell-through rate. I did look it up on eBay. And that should flip the long pants, especially convertible hiking pants. Typically do well, even with like not so great brands like Eddie Bauer, like White Sierra, the kind of also ran outdoor clothing brands. Those do quite well. And don't be afraid to throw the fishing keyword in there as you can sneak it in. Not just for those, but wherever you can sneak it in. It is a powerful keyword. These are Travis Matthew golf shorts. I didn't look up the sell-through on these. I don't know how they're doing in the winter. Probably not nearly as good. Definitely not nearly as good as they probably did spring, summer, and will do spring, summer. But um, should be able to still get a quick flip out of these. It was half off of eight, so four bucks. To address the elephant in the room, there are two words missing from the title of this video, Whatnot and Poshmark. I have had a rough go on Whatnot the past couple auctions. I stepped away from the used clothing auctions to focus on books because um, the book thing has been going really, really well and came back to clothing and the bottom had just fallen out of the market. It is like five times more difficult all of a sudden to do the flips on the used cheap stuff that I was getting from the bins, which was kind of my model with whatnot, being able to source stuff for dirt, dirt cheap and flip it on whatnot for between five to 10 bucks a piece and still realize really decent profit and about the same amount of profit, maybe marginally less than I would have gotten had I listed it, taken photos of it, put it up on eBay or Poshmark. That has apparently gone away. I've monitored a lot of other people's streams. It just seems to be the case. Poshmark Live, uh, I think, evacuated a bunch of buyers out of there. Uh, it does seem to be uh, like a reseller heavy market, which I was kind of agnostic about, but it does actually seem to be the case. Like I did a little poll in my stream uh, that was pretty low attendance despite being promoted like seven, not seven, like three, seven, I was gonna say 72 hours, like three days in advance. And you know, so it goes, no hard feelings. Um, but low attendance, and it, it was mostly resellers. I think there were a couple people in there that weren't resellers. So, you know, there's there's some merit to that argument. Um, there are still people doing really well and whatnot, like people who are selling the good stuff, like the vintage, cool-looking, eye-catching stuff. The stuff, basically, that you would have listed on eBay anyway is, like, selling for good money. Vintage T-shirts, I think, are still doing great. And people are apparently making a killing getting big bulk purchases of new with tags, dead stock stuff like pallets and and that like all new all brand new with tags and flipping it straight out of the box that seems to be doing really well i might look into that but for now this this model that i've been relying on for whatnot it's not really working there is not a point for me to continue doing it it is easier on my neck and back i have if you're brand new to the channel really pretty severe severe to me at least chronic pain issues with my neck and back that make uh, doing any kind of physical resale for clothing a little scary at times and long term I am a little bit scared but whatnot was a slightly gentler method of reselling used clothing but if I'm not getting the return on it it actually probably is worse for me because at least listing on eBay 
uh, which is slightly more work taking all the photos. At least I am getting an adequate return on that or will get an adequate return that I'm not just gonna be spinning my wheels and doing work for essentially no return, which has been the case for the past two auctions. The writing seems kind of on the wall at this point. So it just makes more sense to dip back into eBay, maybe circle back around to whatnot with a slightly different strategy, store some stuff up. I'm not gonna abandon it completely. Certainly not abandoning it for books and hard goods like other niches that do really well on there. But for now, for the men's clothing, especially like used clothing, I'm refocusing on eBay. And I'm also focusing off of Poshmark. I'm contemplating just stepping away from the platform entirely because it just has not produced results really at all for me for a while. I know that they changed their algorithm over. I'll get back to the stuff. Sorry if this is too like editorial. If you're just looking for the stuff, we will get back into it. But uh, they changed the algorithm over cut a lot of people off at the knees. I had a really rough go. I didn't make any money on Poshmark really at all. They switched the algorithm back over to the old one apparently. Hasn't made that big of a difference for me. I've made a handful of sales and admittedly it's my old shitty stuff that I'm just blowing out of my inventory system anyway. So it's not the really A stuff. It's not the stuff people really want because that stuff is all sold off in my absence as I've been away on whatnot. Um, but I... Just my gut level feeling is that I'll probably make more money if I just focus solely on eBay. One of the reasons I was cross-listing on Poshmark, A, is that it was it was making me money. It was a really nice fail save for eBay. If the eBay sales were slow, Poshmark typically wasn't. A lot of the time one would, you know, make up for the inadequacies of the other in terms of sluggish sales. Also, uh, and that's gone away. And also, um, it was nice to have a backup plan for if the eBay store magically just disappeared for whatever reason, if it, if it ceased to become profitable, if something bad happened, if I got my account suspended, I had a backup plan with Poshmark and all that, all those listings would exist somewhere else. Now that I have whatnot as a backup or whatever is going to follow on from whatnot, if it's eBay live or whatever, I don't have plans to really mess around with Poshmark live as, as of yet, maybe. Um, but uh, I just, I, it, it, there's not like a strong case to be made, especially because it does generate problems. Uh, I always seemingly forget to delist off of Poshmark and I don't use list perfectly or any, you know, cross-listing software. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I just, I don't want to pay the money to do it. Um, so anyway, that's like my plan. Um, it's actually, I guess I, I guess I will keep editorializing. If you're one of the people who wants to come in and gloat about my fa my failure on whatnot and teabag my corpse in my hour of need, then, um, you know, I regret nothing. And I think that it was actually a really valuable experience. And I'm also not done with the uh, app. I also stick to my guns in saying that I think live selling is just going to be a part of reselling permanently, whether it's Posh Live, whatnot, or eBay Live or whatever, any other kind of thing. It's going to be a part of reselling for the long term. And if it's something that you're interested in, I think that there are definitely still ways to make money with it uh, and good money. I'm still making good, good money selling books on whatnot. Um, also, it's been really nice to step away from eBay and now kind of pivoting back and looking at it with having some, a little bit more perspective. I'm noticing weaknesses in my game with eBay that were not conspicuous to me at the time. I think I kind of got locked into like an SOP after a few years of doing eBay. I just had a kind of comfort zone and muscle memory and I didn't really reevaluate or budge off of it. And I think there were some pretty gross inefficiencies in the way that I was operating on eBay. I've been watching a lot of other people's content about their processes. Like my inventory system sucks. I hate doing it. It's one of the reasons why I was enthusiastic about taking a break from eBay, potentially like permanently, uh, when eBay, uh, when whatnot was really, really just like uh, a money shower. Uh, one of the reasons is I hate, I just like hate finding the stuff and losing the stuff and having to go through everything and back to the stuff, which is why you're really here. This is a dumb mistake. Don't do this. This is how long I have been away from eBay is that I folded a suit and kept it in the bag, which you should not do. Wrinkles in suit wool are really tough to get out typically. So you want to just drape it over your shoulder and lay it flat as possible across your other bags of stuff in your car. 
instead of folding it up like this and never fold it up and put it in a bin because it'll ruin the suit. You'll have to spend a lot of time steaming it or get negative feedback when you ship it to them. This is a two piece suit. This was blue. This was half off of 25. So 12 and a half bucks. It's Hugo Boss. It's a fairly contemporary Hugo Boss suit. These have always been easy quick flippers for me. This is just a basic navy blue essential. This is the thing that people are looking for. Just a basic solid navy blue suit. I will price it probably having not looked at the comps or the market at 99 bucks and someone will jump on it probably within a couple months. That's a very quick flip for a suit. I've been man uh, able to manage I've been able to manage to do that consistently the whole time I've been selling suits, which is a while. Hugo Boss, I think, is probably my favorite brand of suit to uh, source, to flip, to quick flip, because I don't remember an instance of buying a two-piece Hugo Boss suit that did not eventually flip, and most of them flip quickly if you price them at the bottom of the market, which is what I love to do. This is a new brand for me. Um, 20% off of seven, whatever that is. Copper, oops, I'm kicking my inventory, that's bad. Copper and something, what is it? What is that? Copper and oak. It's a pair of uh, technical pants, almost like scrub pants, which actually might be what those are, or hiking pants or something. Um, dark navy blue. I was on my phone heavily, because at this point I'm rusty. And um, I ha like I need to reorient myself in terms of sell-through rates. So I've been studiously double-checking all the sell-through rates for this stuff. So this is all close to or above 100% sell-through, which is, of course, my brand. That's also what works. VRST, another new brand for me. This is a pair of wrinkly performance pants. 100% sell through on these. They were seven bucks. I don't think they're anything particularly special, but I think these flip between 20 and 30 bucks. Ah, this was where I just came from. This is the last thrift store on the stop, on the stop, on the tour, the tour of duty. Municipal sport utility gear. This is a pair of shorts from a new brand, another new brand. These are, I think, hybrid shorts. They're technically probably I would say board shorts, but I will list these as hybrid shorts if I can't find an exact style code comp. 100% sell through on this brand and on shorts as well. They are a size small. They flipped for around 25 to 30 bucks each. So that should be good. This is another new one to me. Everything unusual or marginal, I looked up. I depleted my phone of all of its precious life energy. So I had a dead phone by the end of the day. That's really a good measure of if you are being smart enough with and careful enough with your sourcing, if you're trying to do the quick flipping high sell through model with eBay is you have a dead phone at the end of the day. Chemical guys. There were no comps for Chemical Guys clothing on eBay, but I just searched the brand Chemical Guys Los Angeles and 100% sell through on stickers and googas and bottles. This was $1. So I think that'll be safe, probably list that 20, 25 bucks. I'll look at their website and see what they're actually selling their shirts for. This is a really, um, really cool shirt from a brand called Magpul that I've heard talked about a couple times. I don't think I've ever found it personally. It's a gun brand. And it has just such, like, cool designs. A hula girl with a gun. Hula girls don't have guns. Size small, which isn't ideal, but this was a buck and way over 100% sell through on Magpul. That should be worth 20 to 30. This is also $1. It's Bonobos, I think. Yeah, Bonobos, just a basic pair of pan chinos. I have not looked up the sell through on this one, but it was a buck. I've done well with Bonobos, solid mall brand. I don't think there's a whole lot of risk there. Same with this one, it's a knit. Look, it looks fairly technical. V-neck activewear shirt for women from Under Armour. I've done really well with this kind of Under Armour piece when I can get it for really cheap. New Tags Under Armour has been pretty good for me over the years. 
and something like this, especially again, if I can find the style code and the exact keywords to use in the title, should do pretty well. It was a buck, I can just list it for 15, 12 to 15, probably be safe. Patagonia, it's a ruffled, lightweight cotton shirt, button shirt. I think it's hideous. And Patagonia button up shirts, in my experience, are actually probably the slowest selling category of clothing. Even the nice twills, uh, like nice fabrics, organic cotton, wool blends, um, take the longest to sell. But I still got it. It was like seven, eight bucks. This, I don't remember if I've ever seen this before. Ministry of Supply. I almost just passed right by this because it looks like some private labeling brand that you would get on Amazon. Let me make sure my mic is still alive. Um, but it's not. I looked it up way over 100% sell through. I think this was like two to 300% sell through. It's this nice kind of, um, what's that brand? It's like anti-wrinkle fabric. Um, there's some dress shirt brand, I'm blanking on it, that used to be crazy valuable and now it's not as good. Anyway, it feels like that. It's gonna bug me. Tune back in in like 10 minutes and it'll be in my head. Lululemon, this was kind of in a hard to reach spot on the rack, which is always a good tip. If there's some kind of obstacle that's making stuff annoying to get to, check there because most shoppers are not nearly as motivated as you are to look at stuff. So probably nobody's dug in there and found it. This was trapped behind some chair. They got shoved into the rack for some reason. There was a bunch of stuff trapped behind it. Um, and again, I will look up the style code on this if I can find the dot, which is always a fun treasure hunt. And this looks and feels like an expensive Lululemon piece. It's not the really like thin diaphanous type fabric. This I also bought blind without looking up the comps. It's Foot Joy, it's size 2XL, it's athletic fit. So those are some good modifiers. It was half off of whatever polo shirt price was. So probably two, two and a half bucks total. Um, it does have this golf course embroidered on it. Um, that does not prohibit a sale. Certain golf courses actually promote sales if they're, I don't know, rare or in demand. Certain golf courses are more popular than others. People will still buy it uh, if it has the golf course on it because it doesn't really diminish the, the value. It doesn't diminish the perceived status of the piece if you're showing off that you're potentially a member of some golf club. This is True Religion. This was green. It was half off of nine bucks. This was marginal for me. I actually do not love selling True Religion that much. It just seems like one of those brands like Tommy Bahama where there are all these huge pitfalls for you just waiting to be uncovered. These I am noticing now, I was screening in a rush because it was closing time, have a couple of stains on them, small stains. Um, we'll see. I'll probably just flip that for as cheap as possible. Let's do some books. Why not? Because it's right here. These are going on a whatnot stream. Bail by Robert McCammon. He's a horror author. City of Courts by Mike Davis, a famous uh, leftist historian and theorist. That's his most famous book. And this is from Verso Press, which is uh, actually that's a good watermark if you're just sourcing by brand with books, which you typically can't do. Verso is actually a good tip off. Vintage copy of Foundation's Edge by Asimov. It's the book club edition, but we don't care because it looks cool and it's Asimov. And then I have another one that I'm going to give as a gift. So I'm not going to spoil it because the recipient watches this channel. Ah, this was not the first stop. Never mind. This was uh, four bucks. J. Crew, J. Crew Mercantile. This is a size medium men's Henley long sleeve Joe Rogan shirt. I've said it again and again. Henleys are typically above average sell through for mall brands and long sleeve Henleys are typically in higher demand than short sleeve Henleys. The Henley is a great little loophole for flipping cheapy brands for decent money. The sell through on those is really strong. I should be able to flip that for 15 to 20 bucks. This was the find of the day. This was four bucks. This weird ass looking pair of shorts with a bizarre, it's got like a, like a poo poo pants pocket there or something um looked real weird on the rack and i actually i had to battle my instincts just to 
to pass it by because I just hated looking at it so much. And it looked really weird. But I, I did look it up and you'll notice the brand and size tags are vertical. They're written vertically, which is also weird. So they're trying to wig you out. That's often a tell that something might be valuable because uh, they're trying to differentiate themselves and I guess make their buyers feel smart for having a vertical brand tag or like they're, I don't know. I don't know what the thought process was here. Anyway, it's Rick Owens, the vicious short from Rick Owens. There's the brand. I'm not familiar with this. I looked up Rich Owens and eBay corrected me that it's Rick Owens. And I just made the briefest pass at the actives and solds. These are worth at least a hundred bucks based on comps, both active and sold. These may be worth like $200. These are very rare. I think they're British because there were a bunch of solds from the UK. Probably designer, one would have to assume. Buttonfly, uh, you know, clearly rare. Who the hell knows how they ended up at this particular thrift store. Uh, hooray, Matt pulled it off. Uh, my friend Carl, thank you Carl, found this for me. A uh, Lululemon, seven buck, another knit. Um, tank, I know deep down the name of this kind of a knit top. I know it, I know it, but I don't know it. And it has writing on the inside of the hem. So hopefully it's ha it has like a size somewhere in there or a style code or something. A boy can hope. I didn't look this one up. I just bought it based on aesthetics. It was five bucks. It's American Eagle and it's this kind of heavier weight, semi knit type fabric. And it's this Southwestern Aztec-y, boho-y, Coachella-y type of a look. Running on Intel that's a few months old, but that should still be just fine. This was the first stop of the day. This is a great brand. I've only found it one other time. It's a pretty rare niche brand from New York called Corridor. And this I actually may keep for myself because it just feels really nice. I think it's in my size. It's this chambray almost quilted. It's a two ply, soft short sleeve button up shirt. It was 10 bucks full price. It has fading on it. If I decide to sell it, which I probably will, honestly, even though it has fading and like patina and stuff on it, uh, it should flip easily for like 30, 40 bucks. This stuff is really valuable. Sell through rate is great. This is a total no brainer, almost unconditional pickup to my mind. If you find it, this actually may be the find of the day. I haven't looked this up. I don't know how much these are going for right now, but this is like a once every couple years find. This is new with tags. It's a pair of wool pants, wool slacks with this plaid check pattern. They're brown and navy. I'm just wanting to build a little more tension. Sutton fit, can you guess? Can you guess? Probably not. It is. Todd Snyder. I don't know if that's going to be visible. Todd Snyder, New York. Another slightly, certainly more common than Corridor. New York designer. Uh, awesome flipper if you find it used. I typically just find kind of ratty old t-shirts that are pretty plain. I've still managed to flip those for some decent money. Uh, this new with tags thing, I assume is worth more than a hundred bucks. It was 15. Don't know how long it had been sitting there maybe not that long. I've gotten really lucky at this place finding higher end pants. Um, so I'm just, I'm saving that as a nice little treat for myself to look up the comps for it to know how much money I actually stand to make. That's a really exciting one. Um, and that almost never, never happens. I don't think I've ever found Todd Snyder new with tags before. This was a dollar. It is linen LL Bean women's size medium. It is contemporary, LL Bean Vintage is way better than contemporary, but that should have really no issue flipping for, I don't know, I didn't even check the comps. Now that I talked up how good of a boy I was being with the comps, these were, I think the rest of these were a buck. Wow, I hope I didn't spend $12 on that one. No, I didn't. That's the sale color. Yeah, a buck for that, easy money. 
This also was one dollar. Pair of Brooks Brothers 1818 Madison wool pants, wool slacks, 36 waist by 32, 100% wool. I passed on a pair of uh, Brooks Brothers Brooks Ease Fitzgerald suit pants. I don't know if that was a good decision or not. My disposition is suit pants don't sell as well as something like this, which is designed just to be a standalone piece. You can tell because it has the actual size on here and it doesn't have the corresponding size of the suit jacket included in the tag. Uh, also, suit pants often just won't have any size tag or brand tag in them because they are sold in a bundle with the jacket, so it's redundant. Um, those should do pretty well. Brooks Brothers, something like that. Not going to be 100% sell through, most likely, but probably safe to assume I can get 15, 20 bucks for it. REI Co op. Uh, REI Co op stuff. REI stuff, generally, you can kind of juice some money out of. REI Co op sells a little better. Then REI Mainline, just vanilla REI. This was a buck. A little bit of pilling on this, but graphic tee. I love selling outdoor clothing. It's one of the easiest categories of clothing to sell. There aren't nearly as many brands to know, and um, it's pretty easy to predict what it is people are going to want. With some caveats, I have like a tier list video on the channel that's a little bit older that is criminally underviewed in my mind. So go look at that if you don't know what you're doing with outdoor brands. This is a new one to me. I think this was also a great find. Don't know how to pronounce it. It is also new with tags. It was also a buck. It's the Super Crew long sleeve, size medium. Don't know the sex, I assume men's. And I don't know exactly how much this is worth. I just checked the sell through real quick. Sell through was good. I think that's a total boon. That was a buck. I think I said that already, maybe. This is Lululemon. It was $1. I don't think people noticed that it was Lululemon. I just know the feel. I, you know, this is a, a canticle that I must recite again and again. You must know the feel, the hand feel of Lululemon fabric. Have an eye for what that cutoff narrow tag looks like and know where to see this logo. It's always bottom left or up here up here in the center. And sometimes it's the exact same color with the saturation turned down a little bit as the fabric, so it's hard to spot. Torrid size three, I was thinking about just giving this to Mick, but he would not accept it because he said that it was too good of an item for resale. It has a couple little goobers on the front that hopefully will just come out um, with a little bit of smudging buck. I'm told Torrid is a great brand for eBay and Posh. I think this is Talbot's, yeah, the other T brand. I've been told Talbot's, I don't, I don't have that much experience selling these because I almost always just give them to Mick, the guy that I usually go sourcing with, who's my buddy, lives close by to me, you know, also a great reseller. So I usually just hand them over to him, so I don't really know what I'm doing with these brands, but I've heard Talbot's aimed more towards a middle age, buyer base, Torrid, excuse younger, was a buck. Low risk. This was a pretty great find, I think. This is Eileen Fisher. And it has a Wasteland tag on it. Wasteland is a really, really, really bougie, annoying vintage clothing, I think, chain at this point from LA. I went in there one time when I lived there to try to flip some vintage stuff to them. And uh, they looked at me like they wanted to shoot me in the head with a shotgun just for being in there. So. Uh, anyway, it's from, it was in Wasteland at some point. Someone bought it, didn't wear it, donated it. Eileen Fisher is a really strong brand. I don't know what the sell-through metrics on it are. And this feels like linen to me. I think it's an, uh, like a lightweight knit linen. Let's find out. Um, it's Italian yarn. We know that. I don't think this has a material tag on it. This is, I am told... By many people, not a great brand anymore. It's made well. Used to be, excuse me, a great brand. It's the uh, the the female marketing of J Crew. Or it's owned by the J Crew people, so it's just like female J Crew, even though there is female J Crew. I don't know. It's the same group. This is like crazy weird color blocking, sort of retro. It's knit. It's size small, but it's really big and baggy. Women's sizing is just madness to me. 
Um, like this is not a small. I don't, I don't get it. I dumb, dumb, dumb doesn't get the women's sizing thing. 100% linen too, which I didn't know until just now. And I'm so smart. I'm just such a good reseller. I accidentally got 100% linen. That was a buck. This I also just bought kind of on instinct. This is Lucky Brand. You don't need to see the Lucky Brand logo, right? It's a size small. Women's kind of looks almost crop toppy. Flare, it's got like a almost almost like a flare or a bell sleeve. Soft, one dollar knit, something or other, probably a poly blend, cowl neck. I don't know, probably 15 bucks. This I paid full price for as my re-inauguration back into sourcing at retail thrifts for eBay. And since I was torturing my neck in the process, I figured it would not be complete without a Ferrety shirt. One of the brands that made me so damn famous on the web. Just kidding, size large. This is really, truly still one of my favorite brands. Some people report that they have trouble selling this brand. If you look at the sell-through numbers, it's like 3X, 4X sell-through. I just, I'm not trying to gloat, but I've never had a problem flipping it. This was 12 bucks. I pick up absolutely everything that I find from Verity. It doesn't always flip immediately, but it always flips. It's always done well for me. There are brands that everybody seems to have an easy time flipping, like Tommy Bahama that I have never, for some reason, been able to break the curse for, and I'm doomed to a life of um, not being able to flip it. Last piece, a pair of Theory pants. They are size 31. I think they are women's though, maybe not. I'll try to find a style code, but they're this heavy canvas chino fabric. Uh, Theory is a strong middle of the roads, kind of slightly upper scale mall brand and these were a buck. I also found a pair of size zero theory pants for, for women, obviously, and uh, I, didn't, I passed on them just because they were a really tiny size and the sell-through wasn't that strong on them. Nick snatched them up. Hope he's able to sell them quickly enough. So, there you go. Back to the grind I go. Um, I both am looking forward to it and am dreading it. Uh, just like I said, because it's physically going to be a challenge, but so it goes. Thank you for watching. See you next time.